Don't you love it when you're watching a movie or a TV show and a certain shot is just so visually satisfying to look at? Well, there's a site called eyecandy.co that has a bunch of these shots for you to look at and get inspired from. Today, I'll be teaching you how to recreate some of these shots inside of Premiere Pro. If you're ready, let's jump on in. So looking through eye candy, you can see that there are lots of shots that are created in camera, but a lot of these can be made actually in post like this one. So when you click on one of these, you can see that there are plenty of more in this same category. For this first shot, let's remake this underwater FX. I got this low angle stock footage from Invato and now it's time to make it look like we're filming upwards underwater. We'll be using the turbulence displace effects in Premiere. Let's actually have the effects in an adjustment layer on top of the footage. If we bring in the shot from eye candy as reference, we can see the shape of the distortion from the water. Now to get it to look similar, we're going to use the bulge displacement type to get more of the circular displacement look. Next, we got to mess around with the size and amount to get it closer to our reference and maybe a bit more complex complexity to get more of the details. I think that's about right. Now to get it to move, we're going to keyframe the evolution. Let's crank this up a bunch because the water seems to move pretty fast here. With some light color grade to make the video more blue, it's looking pretty neat. But I want to make this even cooler by creating some fake light rays. Let's start by duplicating the video and masking out the part where the sun is coming from. Let's add some contrast to separate out the sunlight from the trees better by using curves in Lumetri color. After this, we can nest this top video and use Luma key to cut out the blacks. And finally, to get the light rays, we're going to use directional blur. Let's match the blur angle to the sun's angle in the shot and bam, we got God rays. Finally, let's overlay some water particles and some camera movement from my toolkit. This camera movement just adds a nice finishing touch to the shot. This is what it looks like. The next effect is flash cuts, which is basically match cuts, but faster. There's lots of creative ways to do this. As you can see here, all these cool shots. For this example, I've got a video close up of this woman's face and also some vintage overlays from Envato. I've also got a bunch of eye stock photos to match cut too. Let's start putting them on top of her eyes. And the key to this effect is finding similar things to match too. So for this, we're going to line up all the eyes. And by the way, temporarily lowering the opacity on these photos can help you line it up. And don't forget to bring the opacity up at the end back to 100. Now for these faces, I'll be cropping out just the eyes and then lining them up. And the other key to making this effect work is to be fast. So all of these eyes here are only three frames each. Each. Let's see how it looks. Nice. Now, I kind of want to spice this up a bit. How about let's add some posterized time effects, which lets you change the frames per second of the video. Using this to make the video more laggy should fit the vintage vibe pretty well. Let's make this video become 12 frames per second and just for the part where the flash cut happens. I'm going to make the FPS go down to three so it lags way more. I've been using a ton of stock footage from Envato to recreate these effects. So as you probably could tell, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. With an affordable monthly fee, Envato offers you unlimited downloads of their vast collection of stock footage, pictures, music, sound effects, graphics templates, fonts, and much more. And the best part is, is that you can use these assets in any type of project, whether it's for a school project or a million dollar project for your dream client. Because of this, you don't need to worry about licensing, which if you're an editor is music to your ears. If you feel like jumping into this ocean of assets, be sure to use my link below to get 70% off your first month. And if it turns out to be something that you're not looking for, you can always cancel before the second month so you don't have to pay full price. Low risk and high reward. Thank you Envato for your continuous support of the Premiere Gal channel. And now let's go on to the next eye candy edit. These double exposure shots are simple to make and fun to play with. Let me show you. In Premiere, I have this close up face shot with this cool pink and purple lighting and another video of a girl on a white background. 
Let's put this up on top of the first video. Now to achieve this double exposure effect, we'll be using a good old blending mode. Normally I would use multiply to get rid of the white background, but for this particular shot, I think the overlay option looks nicer and clearer. But the problem with using this overlay is that the white background brightens up the face behind way too much. So to fix this, I'll grab the luma key effect. Now let's make the threshold zero and slowly add more cutoff until we get rid of the extra brightness. Now I know this effect turned out quite simple, but the fun part is adding even more effects to make it more interesting. For example, I have some people dancing on top of the close up face footage. I can set the blending mode of the top layer to be screen, which will take out all the dark areas in the video. Now looking at it now, the color doesn't match that well. Let's first use curves to fix the contrast like we did earlier. And to make this even more cohesive, I'm gonna use tint and change the white Whites to purple. I can even color pick the shade of purple from the footage underneath. That's more like it. Now projection effects are made to look like you're using a projector, which you probably would have guessed by the name, but not everybody has access to a projector. So we're going to do this the old fashioned way, or should I say the new fashion way. Here I'm using the same woman on a white background as before, and I want to project her onto this elevator door. So let's put her in front of the door. For this, we're going to be using a blending mode like our last example. I'm going to use multiply to get rid of the white background. Now it's looking pretty dark. So let's add some brightness with curves. Let's pull up the top handle for some more highlights and also a bit more shadows to get a more stylized look. So this is basically the gist of it but why don't we have some more fun? When the door opens up, I want her to be glued to the door. Let's first freeze the video exactly when the door opens. Then we're going to have to duplicate the video of the woman. We want each video to be projected on each side of the door. I'm going to add a crop to both of them. The top one crop to the right, the other to the left. Now we can keyframe both of them to follow the elevator door movements on both sides. Finally, to keep her in the elevator door frame, we gotta nest these two top layers and do some masking. Select the nest, go to the effect controls tab, and under opacity, you can click this pen tool to draw a mask however you want. In this case, the elevator door frame. And here's the result. These wipe transitions use a very simple concept, like most of the effects in this video, but it's not gonna stop you from creating these crazy shots. Now to understand how these are made, we're gonna go back to the basics. Now first, we need some footage where there's something passing through the frame that covers it horizontally or vertically. Here I got two videos of a woman walking in a mysterious forest. Now I want to reveal that perhaps she has a wolf using this tree that passes the camera from the second video. So to use the tree as a transition, we need to use everyone's favorite tool, masking. For the shot, let's draw a mask following the side of the tree in the foreground. Now you can be as detailed as you want it to be. For me, this is good enough. Let's also add some more feathering to get the motion blur feel. Now the mask edge matches the motion blur of the other side of the tree better. With a good mask, it's now time to keyframe the mask path to follow the camera movements until this side of the tree is off frame. Now that that's done, I can put the first footage with the back angle under this one. And when I click play, there goes the wipe transition. Now I think the speed is still a little bit awkward. Let's just go ahead and nest everything. And using time remapping, I can add keyframes to the beginning and the end of the wipe and make the transition a lot faster. I can also smooth out the speed change by pulling the handle here to create a more gradual speed switch. Here's the final result. So I hope by showing you how to recreate these effects, it'll help you imagine how you can start to create some of these wild ideas yourself. And you can go browse eye candy to see if there's anything on there that you wanna tackle yourself. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay creative and keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.